Hallelujah. We are to be given by God tonight an overwhelming confidence as we take the heartfelt promise that God has given us. Everything God's promised us is just absolutely amazing. A lot of churches are having church, but a lot of churches are not having what we've had. And I'm telling you, there is promises that we have been given from the river to now that there is so much that God has given us. And sometimes it doesn't look like it's going to happen. But I want you to understand tonight, it's time to burst the bubble. It's time to open up the boundaries. And God said tonight, enlarge your boundaries. And there's another side to that, though. And that is, remove self-imposed limitations. We enlarge our boundaries, but we have to remove the boundaries, the, uh, the limitations that we've set ourselves in. You know, you are a only able to do what you believe you can do. Only what you believe you can do. And I want you to, uh, to encourage you tonight and inspire you to rise and take bold Stand right now for Christ and for what God's doing in this place. You need to take a stand. You need to step out from where you've been. We need to all, individually as well as corporately, enlarge our tents. Enlarge our boundaries. Say, God, there's more. How many know there's more than what we've had? Come on, we have our own building. We should be able to rock this place. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I can tell you with great confidence that the very best days of the people of God are right before us, not behind us. The best days are yet to come. We have not seen, hallelujah, <clears throat> it's the same as goodbye with Obama and hello with somebody new. Come on, greater days are ahead of us. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. He said some things this week, and I just ain't going to get into it because it's some messed up stuff. Recently, God spoke to me, and he said this. I want you to hear exactly what I say. This is what God said to me. He said, I give you permission to attempt to exaggerate what I'm about to do. You, you need to hit you on somebody on now. I, I had to hear it a few times myself. I give you permission to attempt to exaggerate what I'm about to do. See, in everything that we do in the things of God, we're supposed to do exactly as he says. When we prophesy, we say what he says and nothing more, nothing less. We never add to nor take away. That's what the Bible says, right? Yeah. He just told me today that I give you permission to exaggerate. You're out there, aren't you? That's where I was today, too. And I was amazed. So I said, where's it in the Bible? Come on. Come on. When you're dealing with a voice, come on, that says something that you're not sure if it lines up to the Word of God, you, that's the question you ask. It. Show me in the Word. And here, you know it's quick. When it's quick, you know there's an answer quick. He said, no problem. Come on, sitting on the couch, mind my own business. And he, he just responds so quickly. And here's what the Lord said. No problem. And he spoke a scripture we've heard over and over and over again. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. To him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. He literally takes me to the scripture that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly. So he said, literally, when you say what I'm about to do and you exaggerate, he wants us to understand that even my exaggeration is still not going to be to the place that he said he's going to do. 
In other words, he says, my attempt to exaggerate what he is about to do is not going to even be touching what he's getting ready to do. Because he's going to do exceedingly, abundantly, above anything we could ask or think. Think about this. Then he said, I don't do this unless he says to do it. He said, look at the Message Bible. Anybody read out of the Message Bible? It says, God can do anything. You agree? You know far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it by pushing us around. Listen. He does it by pushing us around, but by working with us. You got to understand sometimes God will actually move us and push us and pull us and work within us to get that thing to take place. See, the scripture says God can do anything. Is there anything too hard for me? So I want you to understand what God is saying right now that we're supposed to step out into uncharted waters, uncharted territory, places we've never gone before. It's like stepping off the earth into the moon, onto the moon. Supernatural change is supposed to take place because God says it's time for more. It's time for outside the box. It's time for no more of even understanding or comprehending what I'm about to do. So I began to throw some examples to him. I said, all right. So what if I said my wife and family get to go on a vacation that we've been trying to go on for 10 years, it seems like, but it's only been about four or five. We've been wanting to go on vacation and go be together as a family and go have some fun and some relaxation. So I said, God, for me not to be concerned about anything, there needs to be more than enough to do that. To be able to do. Yeah, more than enough. So, And God's already promised that. So he said, exaggerate. So I went ahead and said, okay, God, why don't you just supply $20,000 for just our vacation? I don't have to spend it. But it would be nice. wouldn't it be nice to go on a trip somewhere and just have that? Come on, just have it. You drive for about eight hours or ten hours, and you think, should I stop at a hotel? Got some money in the bank. All right. I think I will. Come on. Hey, man, I don't know about you, but it would be nice. You don't always have to spend it, but it would be nice to be there. It would be nice just to be sitting there. Come on, you could just log in every couple hours to make sure it's still there. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Come on, I said 20000 for a vacation. Come on. And then whenever I got back, I said, okay, and $100,000 for us just to have all kinds of stuff took care of to where we don't have to be worried about things month to month, that we could just take care of business and begin to establish what God's going to do. All the thousands of dollars to be able to update and upgrade everything here to be just exactly the way you want it to do, where I don't even have to do the work. I believe you can do it. Why? Because he's saying exceedingly abundantly above anything I could ask or think. Come on. What would you do if God said you can have anything you want? Just name it. First of all, I want you to know if you ask, there's going to be a price with it. Come on. How many know we're going to pay for it? It's going to be your life. All of it. It's not tapping out for a night. It's a whole life. I mean, sometimes I just feel like my hand is tapping out continuously. Come on, God's got me in the uh, uh, rear neck choke, and he's got me hardcore, and I ain't moving. You tapping out? Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, God can do anything. And our mighty king has outstanding plans for each one of us, every one of us, 
plans that are more wonderful and sure than we could ever imagine or guess or request. Did you hear what I just said? Ever imagine, guess, or request? How many ever thought you'd be guessing your prayer? Everything I've been trying to study lately has been on prayer. Everything. As soon as I, as soon as I type the word pray, I've been putting a period on it and jumping to another sermon. Come on. But how many know if God's speaking prayer, we're about to talk about prayer. We're going to get into some things about prayer. I want you to understand why. Because God's saying, tell me what you want. There used to be a song we sang. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Come on. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. You know what the main line was? Come on. You remember those phones that used to be in houses, everybody's house, before the cell phone? And before that, there was a time you had to climb up a telephone pole to chaw. That was the only phone. It had to be on a telephone pole. Hallelujah. Wouldn't you like that? Could you imagine how much more you guys would text your friends if you had to climb a telephone pole every time? Hallelujah. Could you imagine them in the middle of winter climbing a telephone pole going, Selfie. Oh. <laughs> that was free, by the way. See, the, the Lord says that we can have more than we can even guess. Think about that. You know what guess I, I hear is guess? That'd be like if your grandma came up to you and said, you mind if I just give you $100 for your birthday? Would you be like, I, I guess? You'd be like, okay, I guess. Hallelujah. See, I take it as, well, okay. See, well, I believe God can bless us more than we can ever guess. Can you guess what God's about to do next? Can you guess how he's going to rescue and how he's going to break through in your life? Sometimes we can't even guess it. See, the problem is we all try to put God in this little box to where he only can bless you through your monthly check, through your, through your Social Security, or through your, through your uh, job, or, or, or something. Whatever you put that, that's the only way you're going to break the release. See, God says, guess what? I can do it my own way. You can get checks from people you don't even know. Hallelujah. Is anybody here? Yeah. See, and the Lord assures us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, no man has ever seen, heard, or even imagined the wonderful things God has in store for those who love the Lord. Nobody can even fathom what God can do. Nobody even has a, has a measure in their own mind. Nobody has ever even thought about what God is going to do. I don't know about you, but it's time for us to get back to those days when I'd have $20 in my pocket, and it would multiply to last me an entire month, spending hundreds of dollars within a month, and that same 20 was the only money that I got from my own money. Everything else was multiplication. How many would like to have a multiplication pocket? Come on. At one time during the revival, I had this pocket and this pocket full of about $3,000 of cash. Two, two pockets. $3,000. Come on. And I had another $3,000 in an envelope. And some of you don't believe it, but it all came from a $20 bill. I used to take $20 a week as my allowance. That was it. That would be all that I would get. That would be 100% for everything I would do. That's all I would want. 
And all of a sudden, every time I'd go to break that 20, it would just pull out and it'd be like, what's all this? At first, a couple fives, and then a couple more fives, and then a couple, and, then, and all of a sudden, one day, I'm like, I have more than 20. What's going on? Amen. And then I keep, every time I, I, I just pull it out, and sometimes I'd actually be at a store or something, and I'd just pat it because I'd be like, it felt got like it was getting fatter. How many would like to have a fatter wad in your pocket? Amen. Every time you smack it, it just felt like it was getting bigger. I had a money clip that had to lay to the side because it wasn't thick enough. Thank you, Lord. Come on, that's what I say more than I can ever guess. Come on. More than I can even request. How many would like to have all your bills paid, everything you got going on, and your money's multiplying right before your very eyes? How many have ever had a dream of a money tree? Come on, how many would just like to have one money tree? At least a be fruitful, multiply, and fall down. Come on. Wouldn't you like it just once? We all would. See, my imagination can be pretty crazy. And if I don't have enough imagination for what God can do in my life, I have a lot of people around me that will throw their imagination in there. Come on. They're willing to add some to it if I need some help. And, you know, God has a spectacular plan. Did you hear me? He has a spectacular plan. Bigger. Than that what you've set for yourself. No matter where you are in the things of God and no matter what's going on with you, God has bigger and better for you and he wants you to expand the boundaries in your life. Even if you're facing great hardship, we have his precious promises as our comfort and joy. No matter what we go through and how much we have need of, we have bigger promises than we have need. Did you hear what I just said? You have bigger promises than you have need. How many know when you have money that you owe, it's a lot worse than when you have money than you don't owe anyone? It's easy for us to say, oh, God's blessing me when you have enough over anything you can imagine. No matter what trial you're experiencing it right now, it could be health, finances, marriage, children, even your loved ones. God has great blessings in store. Come on. If we turn to Jesus, he promises that he will cause the word of God to come alive in your life. You know, God wants to bless you more than than then you could ever want to be blessed. No matter what you go through, no matter what you are doing in your life, He wants to bless you. God told me one time, He said, blessing you is good for business. I was like, what? He said, because when you look good, I look good. Come on. Why do you think all these giant businesses and executives all have fancy cars and different things and fancy suits? Why? Because it looks good. If you go in a big law office, you're not going to find one of the lawyers wearing a Salvation Army suit. Come on. Come on. They're going to be top of the line. They're going to be the, the threads that are just, man, whoa, look at those. Why? Because it's good for business. They got to look the part. 
They're going to look successful. Each and every one of God's promises are true, and he will be true to his word. How many know you got some promises? Anybody got promises here? You know what promises are? Promises are <laughs> sometimes they show up when you need them most. See, we think sometimes we receive a word of the Lord. God says, I'm going to do this, this, this. And we think, yeah, amen. And we, sometimes we're on top of the mountain when God says it, and we're like, amen, I believe it. It's going to happen soon. It's going to be real soon. But the thing is, that promise is released into the spirit realm, and it's released for a certain time, and it's released that it's going to come to pass when you mostly need it. How many have ever said, when I get my income tax, I'm going to do this? And then you end up saying that same thing three or four years in a row. Well, how about next time? How about next time? You know, they always say the more you make, the more they take. Hallelujah. Every time, you, every time we do taxes, I, think, I feel like somebody just stabbed me. Every time. It's like I might as well just go to Uncle Sam myself and give him a knife. Do it, man. Do it now. All of heaven and earth may pass away, but God's word never fails. Did you hear me? God's word never fails. See, God desires to take you to new levels, and that's what he's saying. Bigger boundaries. I want to do bigger in your life. I want you to be a living testimony. God spoke to me today. Whew. And he said, you know what? Sometimes when people prayed curses upon your life, it caused the heavens to open up and bless you more. And I said, what do you mean? Here's what he said. They cursed your car, so I got you a different one. Did you hear what I just said? They cursed our car, hallelujah. I mean, I remember the old days when we was driving like 25 miles an hour, and that was at top speed in that old van. Come on. <laughs> that was in full throttle. That was to the floor, man. Come on. Hallelujah. And in the midst of that, the curses opened up the blessings. They cursed that we would lose the place where we was living, so God got us somewhere else. And here's what I said to that. I said, what's going on here? And he said, sometimes the blessing is, is, is scheduled for the need. Sometimes you don't even realize God says, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I will do it. But sometimes it's not always in our timing. If we had it our way, God would already have given us everything all at once. Wouldn't you like to have it that way? Just say, all right, God, drop me about $250,000 right now so we could just get everything caught up. How many know if he did that to every one of us, most of us would blow it? Come on. You'd have it blown before you knew it, and then the roof would still be needed, and all the different things that you said that you would do with it, all of a sudden you'd be down to the last couple grand, and you'd be like, oh, snap. I didn't do what I said we were going to do. Now, don't get me wrong. We would have had some fun. <laughs> we would have paid off some good things, yeah. But sometimes it's like putting a gun to your hand. Wouldn't that be the easy way to say, God, I'd like to have a job, but you could just drop me a bag of money? Wouldn't that be the way to do it? Come on. It's better than you could imagine. 
Don't let anybody in the house find it. Hallelujah. Here's what God said. Don't get stuck in your old ruts. Here's what an old rut is. We all have them. Get home from school. Sit at the kitchen table or the couch on your phone. This is just an example. An hour goes by in the midst of you doing your snack and everything. And then maybe another hour, and then you get dinner. And then after dinner, then you go take a shower. You come back down. You're on your phone a little while longer. You end up maybe doing about 10 minutes of chore. And in the midst of that, all of a sudden, you're sitting on your laptop till you go to sleep. Does that sound like a rut? No? Doesn't sound like a rut to you? Not at all. A rut is something that you do over and over and over and over. You do. whoop de doo It's only because we made it a rule. Here's what I mean by that, too. An old rut can get you into unbelief. If you stay in stuff long enough, you can't believe God for more than you can imagine or think. If you stay in that same stuff, always stay in there, you cannot get out where God is and believe for the things that are unbelievable. I used to say all the time, God did things this week that you would never believe. So because you would never believe it, I'm not telling you. It used to make people mad. Come on. I've seen God do things that will make your head spin. See, we're supposed to submit to God of submit to the God of peace, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You want to blow God's mind? Eight o'clock. You turn on worship for two solid hours on the night that your show is definitely on. See, she's so upset, she's leaving. Hallelujah. Sometimes we don't even realize what we are, 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 what God really wants of us. He says, come on, submit to God, resist the devil, and come on, and they will flee from you. The ruts of your life will flee from you when you step outside the box. Sometimes it's hard to do things out of your ruts. I was praying to God one time, and he, here's what I heard. Boring. I was like, what was that? And I just went back in my same prayer, and I said, Lord, I just thank you for what you're doing, God. He goes, boring. The God of the universe was saying to me that my prayer was boring. Because I was giving him the same thing every day. He wanted something different. Come on. I love chicken. But if I had fried chicken today, it would be great. I probably could do it 10 days in a row, guaranteed. That's how much I love chicken. I could do it, man. I could have it at breakfast. I could have it at lunch or dinner. I really don't care. Chicken is chicken, man. If I had eggs and chicken, I could actually eat the chicken and eat the poo that comes out type of thing. But you know what? There's, <laughs> there's some I could just explain with that, but I'm not going to. But I'm telling you, there's so much that we don't realize that we could get into a rut. After a while, it just gets annoying. You don't want it no more. It's a rut. It's like, ugh, 
I don't want no more chicken. Today I want something else. Come on. And the reason I'm saying this is because instead of receiving fear and unbelief, we're supposed to receive the promises of God. The only way you can receive the promises of God is when you resist the devil. Get out of your rut. Get out of where you've been. Broaden your horizons. <laughs> One time when you said, I'm gonna give my I'm gonna give God 12 minutes. I'm gonna go get I'm gonna go do my 12 minutes. Here's what God said to me. I would give her all four doors if she went 35. I I, I was about to say, he said, Don't tell her. And you did exactly 12 minutes and shut it down. You say, why didn't God tell me? <laughs> See, sometimes it's about getting out of your rut. How many have that traditional way of pressing into God? Sometimes we just say, oh, God, I just want to give you a little time. Oh, God, here's, here's your teaspoon of, uh, of stuff. Come on. The way we give God, sometimes you just want a little more. Come on. Isn't that exciting? Come on. How much more minutes is, is 12 to 35? And it's just... <clears throat> What's funny is a couple days later, you went about 25. Why are you mad? See, it's about getting out of your rut. See, my wife would love if I did some something brand new. Come on. If she got into bed and I began to massage her feet and I, I rubbed them really good and I got her all excited about it and just... I'm, I'm going to keep it PG, and I just rubbed her feet. <laughs> We're not going to go above the feet. And uh, I just rubbed those feet, <clears throat> and she just melts, gets excited. I go get her a bowl of ice cream, go get her a glass of tea, and I bring it all to her, and I ask her if she wants anything else, and then I massage her hands, and, and, and I, just, I, just, I just tend to her. And there's a part of her that would love that, and, and probably would love it several days in a row, but there would be a time where she'd be like, all right, this is old. It's the same old trick. It's the same old thing. You need to move on. Get away from me. Come on. Because it is a rut that we would be falling into. Come on. Hallelujah. I worked with a gal, had a husband that was in love with him, they're divorced now. But she loved it, or he loved her so much. Every couple of weeks, she would receive a, a bouquet of flowers and a box of chocolates. And the first couple of times, she'd walk in with them, smiling great big, saying, Look at what my sweetie did. She put them in water, she blossomed out. She got the chocolates, laid them out, and she opened them up and ate a few and, and passed the rest around, and we all got to have some. And a couple of weeks goes by, and she did it again and received it again. A couple of weeks go by, she received it again. By about the fifth time that this happened, within two months' time, it happened five times, she got the box of chocolates from the delivery person, and she went like this, literally. She took it from the guy's hand and threw it across the room. She took the flowers, dropped them in the trash can. She said, if he doesn't have something new, then I don't want the old. Somebody's getting annoyed by this a little bit, so I'm going to stay here. See, you've got to understand, God says exceedingly abundantly above what you could ask or think. Above. Above. See, see, let's pick on this one. See, when this one was about four or five years old, and she, she made a Mother's Day card for her mother 
It was the sweetest thing in the world. She probably misspelled mommy. <laughs> it probably looked more like I love you. And, uh, but it was the sweetest thing, and she was so excited. But now she's 14, and if she did that same thing right now, her mom would probably be like, man, this is misspelled. I mean, you're a freshman now. Come on, is anybody getting this? Because I'm, I'm, I'm meaning to frustrate some people. Because we are supposed to lift our vision higher. We're supposed to expand our horizons. We're supposed to grow. You can't grow with two hours a night on a laptop. Unless it's got worship in it. <laughs> All right. Tonight, what if I told you that every person in this place is about to receive as much as they give to God? How much you going to get? Huh? Are you at least going to get a, one of those mini bags of chips? Are you going to get a mini candy bar? You know, those ones that are worthless? Snack size. Come on. That's what the big ones are for. That's a snack size. Come on. And what if God says, I'm about to give you all exactly how much you give to me? Is anybody here going to have a good payout? Above all else, we're supposed to accept the invitation of God to come up higher. We're supposed to come up higher. We're supposed to expand our, 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 our borders tonight. It isn't about uh, anything else, but we're supposed to expand our borders to be even up higher into our deliverer and healer. You know God has new frontiers of the Spirit for you to explore higher mountains of faith. See, when we think of faith, we think of bad words. Here's what God said to me today, and it was awesome. I never heard it like this before. Faith is an exploration. It's like treasure hunting. Come on, how many have ever heard of going to a mine, and, and you actually get to dig out little gold nuggets or, or dig out diamonds and gems or or rubies or something and you actually get to you actually get to dig into the side of the hill and actually sift through it and look for the actual stuff you know imagine because a lot of that stuff is in the ground of our earth it's there it's been created over time it's been created between the heat and and the, and the cooling and the, all the things and the rocks and the changes it's been produced naturally in the earth See, God has new frontiers, new places to go. There's so much more than we could ever imagine. Has anybody got big imagination? I've had people imagine and say, I just wish God would drop me about a 100 carat diamond. Problem with that is, what are you going to do with it? If God dropped you a 100-carat diamond and it was worth the 100-carat diamond worth, how are you going to explain that thing? Come on, you're not going to be able to take it to the jeweler and just drop that thing on the counter and say, how much is it without somebody getting a phone call? Come on. Thank you, Lord. So you got to understand, God can do more than you can imagine, but sometimes I believe we just have selfish gain that we're looking for. God wants to do more, but you're going to have to do some. You can't really ask God to open your doors without you opening something up to him. Yeah. 
You know what this means? You can do it with me if you want. I'm ready. You want to do it with me? I'll leave room here. <laughs> See, God wants to do more than you could ever, ever imagine. God wants to bless you in such a nice place to live that you're going to look at it and say, what are we doing here? This can't be for real. Somebody dying here? Come on. Hallelujah. But for the chalk line. Thank you, Lord. I remember buying a car one time, and the, it was about a $12,000 car, and the guy told me, he said, <clears throat> I said, can you come down on the price? As soon as I said that, he said, how about eight? 8000 from a $12,000 car. And I said, all right, but what happened to the thing? I said, and it was during the floods in St. Louis. I said, what is it, over there in, under the water or something? They said, no, no. He said, you bought a car here once before, and I just thought I'd give you a deal. See, I want you to understand, God wants to bless you more than you can figure out. Some people want to be blessed with a, what was that, a $30,000 $30, vehicle that would actually cost you $30,000. But, you know, sometimes God just wants to bless you with a $30,000 vehicle that you only got to pay ten grand for it. Sometimes God wants to bless you more than you want to be blessed. I guarantee you, if God said, all I want you to do is to have billion dollars in your hands to do whatever you want with it, which your desires would become his, by the way. All you would have to do is walk to school for one week every morning. I could see you on the third day going, I'm too tired. I don't care. Come on. I can see you saying, I'm just staying home. <laughs> I don't I I I I know this one and this one, me and my wife, we take our happy tail out there every morning. We'd get up early, and we would walk that thing. Because if God says do it, you just do it. It's tapping out. But see, we've learned about tapping out. Hallelujah. We've been tapping. We still tap out. We're tapping out at least weekly, sometimes daily. I was tapping out today. Come on. Give it up, saying it's you. Are you willing to expand your borders? What's that entail? That's what I love when you got those questions. What is exa exactly does it mean to tap out? It means you give up your will for his. I think sometimes people think that God, when he tells you to do something, he takes everything that you like away. That's just what you think. Now, he'll take the sinful things away. But most of the stuff that I would think about, you don't have that stuff. Come on. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. God says expand your borders. It's time for you to expand your borders. It's time for you to believe for more. Don't just be excited about what you get from the IRS. 
expand your borders. You got more coming than the IRS could pay you out. The IRS is supposed to pay you a, a, a substantial amount. It's not enough. It's not enough. However much it would be, it's never going to be enough. If they pay you out six grand, it's not going to be worth it. It's not going to be enough for what you really need. If they give you two grand, come on, still not going to be enough. And if you don't have kids, you probably ain't getting nothing. So, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. I used to remember those days. I got like $50. Hallelujah. Ten from state or something. I'd be like, wow. Cost me that much to do my taxes. Hallelujah. <laughs> that was back when I was broke. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's something about to happen, but we all need to expand our horizons, expand our borders, and give God more. Can you give God a little bit more? Can you? Should you? Should you give God more than what you're giving him? Should we have to tell you you need to spend time? That's like telling you you have to brush your teeth or clean your room. It should be a given. You should be like, it's dirty. I'm going to clean it up. Dirty mouth. I clean it up. <laughs> I'm having fun. Come on. We shouldn't need something. Sticky notes on your mirror. Brush your teeth, please. You know, I already, have, I already have a wife that gives me that eye. You don't have to give it to me, too. Hallelujah. Come on. I wish God would give us those type of notes or pop them on your screen while you're, while you're right in the middle of your television. I could see you trying to look around it. <laughs> pop it on your screen and say, uh, what about me? Did you just say that? She just said, is there a close button? Yeah, let's just hit close on God. God says, I want to spend some time with you. And you just hit close. Can you minimize it? Come back later? Can it be like the shutdown screen? You can say, come back in 24 hours. That's not expanding your borders. That's staying right where you are. If anything, it's going backwards. You're postponing your blessing. <laughs> Every time you hit the pause button, your doors are going back down how much ever you've opened them. <laughs> what, you ain't liking my sermons lately. The ma manana is going to be even better. I only got about 25 Spanish words in my vocabulary, so I got to use them when I got them. Hallelujah. Huh? Are you ready to expand your borders? Are you ready to expand your horizons? Are you ready to increase? Come on. If you're giving God 10 minutes a day, he might want some more time or a different way. It's about quality, not quantity. Sometimes you don't you need to have access to see what time it is. Just press into him. And if it goes by quick, it goes by quick. But if it goes by a long time, it goes by a long time. Just give him the time. Give him more. God wants to bless you more. More than you can even imagine. You can exaggerate it. And he says, it's all right. Just exaggerate it because he's going to bless you more than you can exaggerate. You can say, I want three vacations 2016. Say, all right, cool. Come on. You got to understand. Saying yada I would like a vacation is not something that's petty, something that's just about us. But we've poured our hearts and lives and what God's done over the past many years. 
and, and we have had nothing to show for it in some ways. So just saying, and, and God's already promised vacation. He's already promised me and my family to have a vacation with more than enough. To be able to do, why, that's why I put it in there. I'm not just dreaming this up from nowhere. Just saying, yeah, me, 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 me. It's about him, hallelujah. It's about what he has already said, and I'm in agreement with it. Are you in agreement with the blessings? Amen. Are you in agreement with coming out? Are you in agreement of growing and coming into that which God's got for you? And you need to have greater imagination with your family. Come on, your demonized family needs God too. Come on. Hallelujah. You think your friends are going to manifest? They ain't manifesting yet. Give God more time. They'll be rolling their eyes around, turning their heads around. <laughs> That's right. Are you ready? Are you willing? So I'm going to ask you this tonight. We need to come into an agreement to make a plan to give him more. And in that plan, we got to imagine more. God's asking some of you to make a list. Get a little piece of paper. Start just writing down some exaggerations. I would encourage you to start out by everything getting paid off. If you have any debt whatsoever, it should be down to zero. Come on. Before you start on your own other stuff and your imagination and your thoughts and anything you could think of, and the children are included in this, you should write down everything that you need, all the debts to be covered, but then you ought to start taking care of the things that you are dreaming of. Start messing with your imagination. Start putting it down on paper. And I want you to put it down on paper to where it can actually have check marks. In other words, when God takes care of it, boop, done. You say, how big am I supposed to go? How big, how big is your faith? Like I said earlier, God said faith is like an exploration. It's like you're hunting for jewels. You're hunting for diamonds. You're hunting for things. You are actually searching through. I believe something's close. God says it's like exploration. Come on. I don't know about you, but we're about to go mining. I've always wanted to do that. Back when I wanted to do it, they started showing up supernaturally. They're like, man, I didn't even have to get out in the heat. Start picking it. Start picking and, 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 and stabbing and digging. They started showing up already cleaned up. See, God can do anything. I, I got, I've done this before, but I, got, I don't know how much time we got, but I got to stir up some faith. If you've heard this, that's all right, but if you haven't, I'm just telling it again. I remember I was driving on these bald tires, totally bald, bad tires. I mean, type of tires, you put a penny in the tread, that's an old thing. They say if you see the head of the penny, you know, then you're good. But if you don't see, you know, if, I mean, if it's flat, come on, then you're in bad shape. And these things, hallelujah, I, I saw not just the whole head, but I saw more than the head, hallelujah. I mean, I, I saw almost the edge of the penny on these tires. And I was, I, was, I was driving to Springfield and back to Litchfield. And on the way back, I'm driving down the road. And it kind of wobbled because these tires were re very bad. And all of a sudden, clear day, no storms, no weather, summertime. All of a sudden, the car felt like somebody was picking it up and throwing it around like this. So I'm thinking I have a blowout. And then all of a sudden, it smooths out, just like somebody just picked it up, shook it, and dropped it back down. 
So finally, it, it, it smoothed out, kind of slowed it down just to be safe. Got all the way to Litchfield, pulled into the church. Got out of the car, and I walked around. I'm looking. All four tires were brand new tires with needles on them, like somebody just put them on. I had them checked out, and they were 70,000-mile tires, better than I would have ever bought at the time. Hallelujah. Even if I had the money, I had a 70,000-mile tire on a 15-inch. Hallelujah. That probably was probably six, 800 by that back then. I was like, whoa, whoa. And then we was in the middle of a service that same week. And because of the signs and wonders and all that God was doing, we started locking the sanctuary door when we left to make sure nobody was trying to plant anything or make it look like something that God wasn't doing. We wanted to make sure it was real. And we had them locked to a certain extent sometimes where we would always want to go unlock them, the doors with, with more than one person with us. So there was always witnesses. And when we went to open the doors, the sanctuary probably was as big as this room here for the entire sanctuary. And it was like every inch you could see a gemstone all through the sanctuary. Thousands of gems. This was supernatural. This was an increase. This was during the time of the multiplication of money. I'm telling you, it's time for us to understand we are going back to these places. God has invited a supernatural being to come here tonight, and they are assigning spiritual assignments to every member, every person. My house alone has one, two, three, four, five assigned angels. Come on. Hallelujah. Some of you say, well, you know, it ain't fair. You got more people. Come on. Tasha got four and five if mama's there. Come on. If it's in the house, she's going to get one. Hallelujah. Because God said it's supernatural. It's supposed to be opening up in the, in the house. And, and I'm telling you, no matter who we are, and you got to understand, but if their heart ain't right, you understand it would just be filtered out. They'll just, you just have to get their measure. Ryan says, all right, cool. I'm going to be a blessed basement, but the foundation up is in trouble. Come on. Because God is about to pour out his spirit. He is going to assign angels of this supernatural proportion. I don't know what happened on that freeway. I don't know what happened in the supernatural realm. All I know is when those master craft tires got put onto my car, it was something I knew that was supernatural. Hallelujah. It was beyond me. I, even a man of faith at the time, was like, what in the world just happened here? Come on. And it was things like this that would take place. When I was sitting there and the oil pan went through, the rod went through the oil pan as I pulled that old blue car into the dri driveway. And you got to understand when that happened and that angel, Alec Bean, that I didn't know at the time showed up and replaced that engine for me within a couple of days and, 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 and then disappeared. And where he said he lived was a vacant trailer. Nobody even lived there. And I got a new engine put in a car in two days. First of all, that's almost unreal. Yeah. Not to mention, he didn't cherry pick the engine in. He picked the engine up and dropped it in the car. Big boy. Now, it was only a four-cylinder engine, but I don't care. Hallelujah. You ain't still going to pick up probably a 300-pound engine, deadlift, and drop it into a car, and it falls into the right holes. Come on. I'm telling you, things like this happen. And it did happen. It's not just a memory. It's not just a, whoa. It's the real deal, man. And we're about to step into it. Here's what God said to me. He said just now, he said, you know what it's, what it's like when you smell in doo-doo? When you step into it, you smell like doo-doo. Come on, when you step into doo-doo, you smell like doo-doo. You can't get it off of you. Even when you throw your shoes off. It's like that stench is on you. God said, you're going to step in blessing and smell like blessing. Come on. Amen. Come on. Come on. You're going to, I mean, blessing is going to be exactly what you're going to have a stench of. 
Come on. It's just like you just stepped in the horse stuff. Come on. Stepped in a cow patty and got it all up in there. Did just step on it, but it went up part way up your pants leg. Hallelujah. Come on. Nothing worse than a fresh cow patty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, God's about to bless you so much that you're going to stink like blessing. You're going to stink like blessing. Woo! You're going to smell it because God's going to do more. I'm telling you, we are stepping into that right now. Whether we know it or not, God has done unbelievable things over the past several years. Over and over. Sometimes we look back, and, and when God did those big blessings, we're like, oh, do it again, do it again. What did we do for that to open up? What did we do? We went out to Chinese. We went to do this. We celebrated. We, hey. Sometimes you almost want to do the same thing. It's not superstition, but it's the same thing like, because you're like, how did I do that? How did I, what happened? You can't redo it. God said there's going to come a day, uh, and I don't. when he says that, I don't know when it's going to be, but he says there's going to come a day that we're just going to step into a $10,000 blessing just like the one that happened, uh, 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 you know, the big one that happened. It's going to be a $10,000, boom, week. It's like all of a sudden $10,000. Ken was like, all right, I'm going shopping. Hallelujah. But it's things like that that you could actually do what you need to do. Take care of some business. See, God's going to bless some of you. Some of you got money that's owed to you that you don't even know about, and it's going to come and chase you down. Some of you are about to find some blessings. Hallelujah. 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 See, if you just plugged in just the way God's wanting you to plug in, things that were promised to you are actually debts. Did you hear me? If you've got promises that's been promised to you, let's say from people, let's say for an example, if you've got a dad that promised you something that never happened, in the spirit realm, it's a debt that is owed to you. God can make do on the debt. Paid in full. How many birthdays? Mm-hmm. Come on. Come on. See, sometimes if you go the right direction, you're going to stumble over those blessings. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Merry Christmas to me. Think I'm kidding. Some of the blessings that we are living in right now, and I don't mean this as bad. I've forgiven my mom, but it's for all the Christmases and birthdays that she never, ever did anything for me. Some of the stuff we have happened over the last many years has happened because I'm getting my makeups. I'm getting blessed because it's due. Come on. So see, what happens when God adopts you? He wants to do things that you never got to do. He begins to catch you up. Come on. I think I averaged two birthday presents in my entire childhood from my mom. You would flip out if that's all you got in one year. If I said two presents, that's all you get, you'd be like, it better be big. It better be like a $300 Xbox of the thing I'm a jigging. Those don't go in our house. Something wrong with those demonized machines. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God's in the blessing business. Are you ready to receive it? <laughs> you know, God cares about what you need. You don't have to ask Mama, can I get this? And she gave you the. 
Because when you're blessed, they're going to be like, What's, how, don't you need anything? Like, no, I'm cool. Because God's going to bless you anyhow. You've got over 10 years of blessing coming to you. Over 10 years. It's debt due. It's close to due due. But you're going to step in and make it blessing smelly. Hallelujah. Debt do 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 smelly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> this is God good. You don't like me saying do do, do you? How about poo poo? I used to ha- I used to know a dog named Poo Poo. Yeah. It bit me and I punched him in the mouth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It was a bean dog. Hallelujah. I'd be mean too if you called me poo poo. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Come on. Are you ready to step out? Are you really ready to step out? Are you willing to give it a little bit more? See, if you really were willing, it would just be you out. But you're already thinking, man, it's going to be difficult. Oh, man, that could mean less time, and I, I got some stuff to catch up on. I love to dig. Are you ready for more? Here's what can happen. God's going to bless people who are blessable in each house. And it can happen like this. You're, you're making your boundaries bigger. He's blessing your socks off. I'm making mine bigger. He's blessing my socks off. you making your, you making your boundaries bigger. He'll bless your socks off. And if you're sitting there like a lump on a log, eh. Or it could flip-flop. You over there, and you're, eh. You say, well, that ain't fair. It's the blessings in favor of God. If you're in the blessing house, you'll receive the blessings. Lord, right now, we just thank you, Lord, for the supernatural increase. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for iron. Healing. Supernatural in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for abundance of breakthrough. Thank you, Lord. God's healing Ariana's bowels. Something supernatural is going to have some nasty, but it's going to be good. Hallelujah. (laughs) She thought it was funny. It's going to have some nasty, but it's going to be good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's like only part of her digestive system is working the way it's supposed to. So it's like it's all going to work. So it's just going to be a bigger load. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You're up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, if anybody wants to give tonight, I want to give that opportunity. Lift up your hand where McKenna can see it. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God is good. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for increase and blessing, supernatural blessing and increase on every person in this place. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for financial breakthrough because that's one of the things that you're going to do in this. You're going to expand our borders. You're going to increase our borders so much that we are going to see blessings more than we can hardly receive. More than we could ask or think. More than we can ever imagine. So, Lord, bless us and bless everyone in Jesus' name. Come on, let's worship as we give right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.